we are live welcome back everybody to strictly casual for episode 40 we have Four done oh, baby. 40 episodes of checkpoint okay eight five round episodes eight what nope that doesn't make sense didn't I make sense at all anyways back. we're back guys it is november 12th today which is also playstation 5 launch day uh, if you're here right now hanging with us, we're live on Twitch. If you're watching this, you can watch it tomorrow on YouTube at 9 a.m., possibly earlier, depending on when the upload goes live. But it'll be there for your viewing pleasure. Uh, Checkpoint is not your one-stop shop because we're going to stop saying that. Fuck a one-stop shop. We're going to just stop saying that in general. But Hate we it. got all of it's not your, a good saying. All the best gaming news that you need to know about right now. And guys, before we get into it, we have someone very special joining us for this episode of Checkpoint. Yes, we do. This is the boy, Luigi. Say your last name so I don't butcher it on the first time you're on the show. I got you, fam. Uh, my name is oh, Luigi, your mic is quiet, dog. Your Hold on. God. I got to boost it. I got to boost it. Boost me. Boost me. F. Boost me up. There it is. It's <laughs> oh perfect my now. God. It's perfect. All right. <laughs> Luigi, go for it. What's up? Um, my name is Luigi Esbagel. I'm sure everybody knows me. I pop in and out of people's streams. But if you don't. You're about to get to know me right now. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, wow. wow. Incredible. So. <laughs> Luigi is a part of the team here at Strictly Casual. So super excited that he's joining us on this show this evening. Um, but you guys. I'm also team PS5 with the rest of these gentlemen right here. Wow. But I like to say I'm neutral. There's but no I'm, bias. I'm definitely a PS5 loser. Finn, don't lie to the people. Don't lie to yourself. Don't lie to people. I know. You're not I, neutral. I want to try to be neutral. You run the blue lights. <laughs> Every time we know what it means. That's purple, I swear to God. Okay. Um, <laughs> you guys, it is launch week, baby. The Xbox Series X launched on Tuesday. The PlayStation 5 launched today. James, can I get an update with your PS5 order real quick? You can absolutely get an update with my order. Please. That's a table slap right there. It was justified. Now, I was complaining before this show got on the docket. Mine still hasn't fucking shit, okay? Okay. But five minutes before the show right mm -hmm. five minutes really literally before we went live i was freaking out some of you in the chat were seeing it i was freaking out and that is for a very good reason sure and that is because target sent me a notification sorry they didn't send me a notification i checked it myself okay because i'm a grown-ass man i sure. check my own orders okay not only is my ps5 shipped yes but i have an arrival date of friday november 13th James, you're getting it tomorrow? What? Tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be getting my PlayStation 5 tomorrow. Oh, okay. So all day, all day, it's saying preparing to ship for me from Target, right? And yep, then it finally shipped to. about 45 minutes ago before we started this episode. And it gave me a date of Monday. And it still says Monday? It's Well, I haven't checked it. Check it right now. Check it right now. Check it right now? Right now. Check it right now on stream. Okay, you guys continue. I'll, I'll be checking. I'll be checking right now. James, you should Luigi, what is your current yeah. situation in terms of next-gen consoles? That's a great question. Um, it, it got quiet again, Luigi. You're, it you're got quiet, quiet again. Dog. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, my gosh. You hate to fucking see that, it. I hate to fucking see it, but as far as... Can you hear me now? Uh, it's still low. Better. Goes, okay. Well, I, I can talk louder. I got Maybe it. I just like turned this? you up. I turned you up. You're good. Okay. As far as next-gen goes... Um, I really want to get a PS5, man. I'm really waiting for it. Um, I might do like a Christmas Day deal. Maybe they lower it like five bucks or something. Ha! I don't know. Good luck. I don't know. Good luck. I like, I like, <laughs> I like to get the sale um, over the, the retail price, unless it's something like, like the next-gen console. I probably will play it. You know, I probably will pay uh, 500 How much was it? 500 500 for, for disc. The, for the disc version. But if you're a digital guy, yeah. you can pay 400 Yep. Yeah, I'm a Disney guy all the way. Which is a fucking bargain. I have, the P I have two, right? It is, it is a bargain. Bro, people think about like $60 games being so much. And I'm like, you get a whole world. Well, 70 like, now. 70 now, so dog. Stuff. 70 now. Is it's the expensive. Oh, yeah, for first party, yeah. There's, wait, for next gen, they're doing $70? Yes, sir. Like that's, that's... Across the board, standard. At yep. least for first party titles. It's expensive. I'm, yeah. It's damn I'm expensive. leaving after that conversation. Uh, chat, thank you so much for... Like, Chad, thank you for letting me know about the audio delay. I'm working on that right now. Thank you, thank you. I hate to see it. There's a lot. There's always a lot going on with a, with a checkpoint episode. Um, I just checked Target again. My PlayStation Five will not be here until Monday. Still, 
It's coming from Oregon, so I don't know if it's it's that's closer to you than that is to me. I think that's their it might be it, closest mine's warehouse. Also in Oregon right now. Yeah, I bet that's the closest warehouse. So, or wherever that's coming Peace from. He's let me say you can bet your ass that I'll be doing a unboxing stream and a little bit of that guy on my channel tomorrow. That's gonna be very exciting, very exciting. All right, guys, mm -hmm. let's just get right into it. Last week. Basically, the entire episode was about Xbox, which is good because we don't have a lot of Xbox episodes. So we're going to start this one off with a little bit of uh, PlayStation 5 reviews because we did all the Xbox reviews last week. Um, here's the deal. The reviews came out Friday. You've probably seen them. This is just a like a roundup, you know, like a little review yep. roundup. We uh, got literally three reviews. Three reviews. We got eight out of ten from IGN. Okay. We got an from, eight out uh, of ten from Wired. Luke, hold on. Luke yes. Riley. Luke Riley from IGN. If you follow specific journalists from IGN. Yeah, and then a four point five out of five at Tech Radar. Pretty dang good scores. Good scores, very good scores. Um, I don't know what Tech Radar rated. They rated actually. I do. Tech Radar rated the Xbox Series X a four out of five. Okay. Um, giving PlayStation Five the slight edge. I assume it's because of the controller. Um, the controller is getting nines and right. I don't know if perfect scores, but definitely like nines and very high scores across the board. Damn near the most exciting um, part of the. Part of the yes, new these are PS5 scores. Peace out. Um, that, is, that is what I'm hearing too. The that the controller is all the hype. It's got like this enhanced uh, mobility or something inside of it that you feel. I don't know what it's specifically called, but I'm haptic sure. feedback. Haptic feedback, baby. Triggers. It's haptic triggers. There you go. There you go. Haptic feedback, baby. That's I'm excited. Yeah. Um. Fucking James is a walking encyclopedia of this stuff, man. He's like, we do talk about it every week, every we day. We do talk about it every week. This is our we life. We talk about the same Luigi. damn thing. Yeah, it's true. Me and James text each other upset that our <laughs> PS5s haven't shipped for the last two weeks every single day. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Has it arrived? Has it changed? No. New notification yet? No, nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's just a lot of pain. All right, get your Fs ready, boys. <laughs> we got a big one coming up here. Okay, I'm ready. I got get, my hand ready for it. Get those F's up and ready because Marvel's Avengers player count takes oh, no. another dip as Square Enix reports poor sales. This is from Matthew F. Wilson F. at Kit Guru. Okay, so here's what's going on. Square Enix has already reported this week that it suffered a $48 million loss in its HD games division due to lower than expected sales of Marvel's Avengers. The bad news... That is so much money. That's a lot of money, dog. That's a lot of damage. The bad news doesn't end there. As the game has dropped below 500 average concurrent players worldwide. That is abysmal. What? That Under is Under 500. So, as pointed out by Forbes, this is going to be an issue for players hoping to team up to beat the game's biggest challenges, such as Tachyon Rifts or the upcoming Aim Lab Raid. These missions can be played with AI teammates, but Marvel's Avengers bills itself as a co-op game. With matchmaking pools shrinking like this, it's going to be difficult to maintain a lively multiplayer base. Uh, Kit Guru says, Don't make those types of games. Don't, don't make those types of games. This man. is a hot take, Luigi. You're saying don't make live service games? I want to hear it. I want to hear this hot take. Personally, bro, I I saw the article when their their stuff had shrinked the first time. Yeah, and I was so shocked because I still wanted to play. I haven't played that game at all. Me like, I've only watched reviews. I've watched, and then for me to suddenly see it just come from like, oh wow, Avengers, Marvel, yeah. wow. So and then it just drops, and then now it's just memes, and now it's just at this point, it's like you're gonna see it at the twenty dollar bin, and people are just gonna be like, oh, Avengers. Yeah, nah, nah, I don't want. Don't. It. That was very <laughs> accurate. Twenty dollar bin on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I. Like maybe a year and a half ago, before we saw any footage, if you would have asked me about the Avengers game, I would have told you it would have broken sales records. Like I would have been like, and I would have told you that it's a fucking six out of ten. I I would have been like, it's Avengers, it's gonna sell a multiplayer, right? I was like, this game is gonna be record breaking. But God, was I wrong? I saw the first footage and then changed I've my been outlook. Telling you. Well, I've been telling you since the beginning. I believed you only when I saw the footage of the game mm -hmm. and i played the demo and the demo turned me off so much uh it was terrible I'll so finish up this last point and then i want to make a claim okay i'll finish up the last point kit guru says at this point it seems clear that marvel's avengers either should have been delayed or should have been reworked into something more akin to a polished single player narrative I i'm agree. still hoping next year's updates bring to i'm st i'm still hoping next year's updates brings new life to the game but the early signs aren't looking particularly good for this one all right, here's my prediction. Ready? 
Yep. I'm seeing in the future, I'm looking into my crystal ball, and I'm seeing a revival from PS Plus. This game is going to go on PS Plus. Wow. It's going to be a free game, or it's going to go on a deep... No, no, no. It's got to be free. It's either going to come back on Epic Game Store as a free game, okay, or uh, Game Pass, or all of the above, and it's going to make a comeback for like maybe a month or two, okay. but then that's going to give it just enough momentum to give Square Enix to be like, oh, 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 we got to put work into the game, and then like, then when they re when they have that audience back for yep. a split second, boom, new content. Boom, hook the players back in. They overhaul the gameplay, making things more smooth, rehaul the loot systems and everything. Sure. Absolutely, piece a freemium game. Okay. So, that's a great But it's a pre- but it's man. still like they aren't switching the model. That's- it's the same model, right. but they're just adding more content because right. as it like it's still the same model unless they do the uh the Destiny route and they say that we're going to offer this free version mm. and then if you want the DLC, Oof. you can pay for that too. That's a lot. So we can either know, take bro, a Destiny please. route or a, or a bro. PlayStation Plus Redemption. All I know, bro, is if they can fix Peter Parker and make him look like Tom Holland, they can give me a brand new Avengers game. You know? <laughs> so that's, well, that's, that's my I don't think that's it. fixing Peter I don't know. Parker. <laughs> that was like almost a uh, retcon, you know what I mean? Like a, <laughs> we got to fix this now. Random, bro. <laughs> um, so I random. think it was but more game, premeditated bro, than a retcon. Way. <laughs> you think what, Luigi? Yeah, I, I think that's the best call, personally, with uh, what James was saying. Like, if you're going to do... Because they're already saying the first PS5 game that you're going to get, the first free one, is on Thursday. And I'm going, I didn't even think about free PS5 games. Bug snacks. And they're already doing it, so... Yeah, bug snacks. That's crazy. Um, is that what it is? Bug, bug snacks? Bug snacks uh, is the yeah. free one for this month for PS5. I think we're going to talk about bug snacks later. Maybe not. I thought we had something. But... You know, um, we can talk about it if we fucking want to, Vince. We can always talk about it. That's right. You're right. Um, <laughs> exactly. well, okay, uh, Avengers. I want Avengers to have a redemption arc like No Man's Sky. Like, I think this game has potential, and I think it sucks right now, you know? And I think what people... Yes. I, I, I don't know. I see it maybe in three years when all the characters are added, all the glitches are gone, when they finally have that next-gen upgrade um, available. I think... I think we might see something, maybe like a, maybe it's on sale 20 bucks, all the characters are in there and they like really sell it. They really sell it's it. It's like a whole ass bundle. Mm-hmm. Or you buy it and you get a free copy that you give a friend so you can play missions together or something like oh. that. I really mm-hmm. like that route. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. That's um, a good idea. I like that too. But that's it dude. This is sad. Cold. Under 500 players mm-hmm. concurrent. Like what? <sighs> yep. Hate to see Dormammu it. Dormammu told me a long time ago. What did Dormammu tell you? That it wasn't going to do well. It's fair enough. Fair enough. Because Square Enix did not come to bargain. Nope. Okay. I looked into unprepared. the time stone. <laughs> I did. Bad news. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw the time. 6.5 is all around. 6.5 is all around. <laughs> Just about. 6 at, I think 6 at best, but that's me. All right, James, give me this next one. The Xbox Series X seems to have a disk drive problem. This comes from Patricia Hernandez at Polygon. It's console launch week, which means there are many fans. Huh, get it? Wait, that doesn't relate to anything. It's disk drive, not fans. We're about to get a later article. Yeah. Anyway, are now opening and starting (laughs) up their new hardware. While for the most part, the Xbox Series X debut seems to be going well, now that Xbox Live is back online, some fans are reporting issues with their disk drives. Videos floating around on the internet show the Xbox Series X whirring loudly or making strange clicking sounds after accepting a disk. Um, If you were an owner of a PS4, it was a little janky like my i have the launch console and it's yep. making a similar sound to what you'll see in the xbox series x currently it's a little strange right uh videos floating around on the internet show the xbox series x i just read that read this didn't i yep worrying loudly and making strange yes i did yep that's if the console accepts the game at all some sh- videos show the xbox series x having trouble with games insertion altogether some players report that things improve if they try putting their consoles horizontally or vertically, if, you know, whichever one it's having trouble with, they'll move it to the opposite side and it'll fix it. Um, one thread on Reddit has players saying they're brute forcing their games into the console, just jamming that boy in there. I'll tell you, there's videos of that, and it's hysterical. <laughs> it's, that's scary, that gives me anxiety. That's like when people hang their phone, like, yeah. in the elevator crack, like, they just hold it there. It's the same, same thing. Same thing for me. Um... 
Others, meanwhile, say that they only hear loud sounds from the Xbox Series X while installing games, but not necessarily okay. while playing them. Microsoft did not return a request for comment in time for press folks at... Poly- that was a weird sentence for me. In time for press. In time for press. Folks at Polygon who got the console early... <laughs> who got the console early for review have also not experienced problems like these. Right. Yeah. I I don't think this is like a widespread problem. I just know it is a problem. Like it's happened to some people. I don't know if every no, I don't think everybody's gonna be affected by this. This might just be like a couple consoles. But yeah. those couple videos going viral on launch day is bad. Like you hate to see that. Do you think it'll be a recall sort of deal? No. Do you think they're gonna shoot recall? No. I think the people that have problems deal with your loud ass Xbox. No, the people that have problems with it, they could they'll <laughs> probably have some Xbox support. They can send it back. It's you know not I mean? unusual for Xbox to yeah. have loud systems, so it's okay. But damn, shots you fired, know Luigi. <laughs> wow. Do you know what is a problem? What? People's Xboxes are smoking. Are they, James? I don't know. Tell me, Vin, are they? Well, here's here's what's going on here. Uh, there's a lot of circulation over these viral videos of the Series X booting up with smoke coming out of the top. Now, Luigi and James, have you guys seen these on social media? I've seen all of them. I've seen the compilation. So, Luigi, I'll explain it to you and I'll explain it, explain it to anybody watching here. There are a lot of videos of people with their iPhones, you know, recording their Xbox and just billows of smoke is just piling <laughs> like, out of the top. It's a comical amount of smoke. Yeah, like I'm talking... Like, it's not just, like, a little bit of, like, steam coming off. It is, like, a fireplace, like a chimney, like a top of a chimney. It literally looks like an industrial smokestack. And you're like, what the hell is this? so cool. The first video, I was like, there's something wrong. Like, this is terrible. This is bad. This is going to be really bad. But, no. Come to find out, people are vaping underneath their consoles, and the fan (laughs) brings the vape up, and it just billows out of the top of the Xbox Series X. And you can see in the corner of the video, you can see the vape going into the frame from the right-hand side. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, there's a lot of videos of this, and Xbox had to actually tweet. They said, and I quote, we can't believe we have to say this, but please do not blow vape smoke into your Xbox Series X. <laughs> so like, good. what? It's hysterical. It is so funny. I love that. I'm not going to lie, they had oh. me go in there. The first time I saw the video, I was like, Yeah, they had me go in This too. is bad. Yeah. But then it's. That is bad. <laughs> then it's you, hilarious. Oh, so you guys believe that it was actually like smoky? For a hot second, like yeah. Video. For a hot second, yeah. The first time I saw it, and the, but I think the video I clicked on, like the comment was about how it was fake. Right. So mm. it was already like pretty much disproven from the start. I just needed context. I, I saw it on this Twitter you thing. Just and this guy. To see it? That's cool though. Yeah, this guy like tweeted about that it was real, and then followed it up in his thread that it was fake. And so like I was, yeah. was like, what in the world's going Have on? Have you seen here? the ping pong balls? I haven't seen the ping pong balls, but I heard about them. James, tell me about the ping pong balls. So people, apparently, because the Xbox Series X's fan is on top, yeah. you can place a ping pong ball in the center, and it'll keep it floating. It's great. It's amazing. It's so great. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right, great. so this next article we're going on to. This is, is big. This is, the, this is a big one for the week. It's huge, lengthy. It's a little convoluted. It's, it's legal. It's on the same kind of... Um, legal level as uh, the Fortnite Apple thing, I think, but definitely not as big in scope or in sure. terms of notoriety. Right. Yet. Okay. I was. Yeah. I would put okay. a yet on there, big time. So back in May, Twitch got in hella trouble with the music industry. Like a lot of companies from the music industry were just started filing complaint after uh, copyright claim after copyright claim on Twitch. Before this, it wasn't a big issue. Right. But I guess sometime within the growth of Twitch during quarantine, maybe, or like, I don't know what the catalyst was, I, but it would... I would have to like I, say that I think it's always been a problem. It's just been they're now starting to strike down on people a lot harder because Twitch can get in trouble by other people too. And so yes. they, they're like, this is like an action that they're starting to take a lot more harshly now. Yes. So until May of this year, streamers as a whole yep. received fewer than 50 music related DMCA or Digital Millennium Copyright Act notifications each year. 
So out of all the streamers that are on Twitch, right. there were fewer than 50 music related of these claims. She don't have year. to worry about wow. it. Right. So no right. one would have to, hardly anyone would have to worry about it. This quickly boomed to thousands of these notifications each week. Mm -hmm. Huge contrast. So Twitch, they just removed these flagged videos because that's what they're required to do by law. Yeah. Like you have to remove it. You can't do anything else. So long story short, people were pissed because the only removal tool they got that Twitch gave them was a little red button that said remove all flagged content. Sure. They had no ability to go in and edit the footage or try and... Uh, cut out the audio or anything like that. They only had this removal removal button. So a lot of people, especially this one streamer Stark, which I was unfamiliar with, but I know is very prominent in the community. Yeah. Um, she's been streaming for like five six years, and so she's basically like has to delete like her life's work, all of her vods, all of her clips, everything that was pre saved on a Twitch I, because of copyright claims. So another thing that this goes on too is you can't. You can download those VODs and keep them for yourself, but you can't re-upload them on YouTube because YouTube strikes down like that on copyrighted music, right? So right. there's nothing you can do. There's nowhere you can post it that is going to be like, okay, to have that posted. That's another problem. Right. And in addition to this, they didn't give them very long to address their VOD and clip libraries so that if they wanted to upload it to a hard drive, like HDD external hard drive, they were not able to do so because it just would take too long. Right. Um, to which uh, Twitch did apologize for. Um, so in response, they apologize and they're working on new tools to help streamers who are flagged for copyright and give them more detailed ways to manage their archives. Yep. And they're even working on this. Excuse me. Sorry, a little <laughs> All good. Maybe All good. Um, so they're working on this kind of ambitious new tool called Soundtrack. Yep. That lets streamers play licensed music on stream, but then when it uploads to VODs and clips and things like that, it automatically removes it. And oh. so they really don't care about what you stream, but it's the upload that but counts. Also, in addition to that, I have, I know people that are using soundtrack beta right now and it gives mm -hmm. them copyright free, free music to play. Yes, that too. And so the, it doesn't delete it after the VOD goes up. Yep. So there's that option as well. It's, yeah. There's both routes. Sure. Finally, they're working to give streamers the ability to review infringed content to help them file a counter notification if they need be. So if it's flagged and it's unjustified, they can just like help them. They can file like, oh, this isn't right, like and send it back to yep. them. And so it can be uh, an individual claim as opposed to like a blanket statement. So then there's recent development. There's literally an uh, article published about this today. Uh, this is, sorry, I didn't cite who this was. This is uh, Bijan Stefan from The Verge. Okay. Um, recent development. So the soundtrack feature is apparently not good enough to satisfy the music industry in its current state um, because it's still in beta, but right now it is not in a state where it is, um, the music industry still wants, yeah. the, wants this content to be removed regardless. Yep. Uh, even now the software doesn't work 100% of the time as even unlicensed music, music simply gets muted in VODs and clips. So even if you use the aspect of the tool that allows you to implement unlicensed music mm -hmm. or license free music, um, it still gets muted. Sure. Uh, the main issue is that Twitch doesn't have a tool that allows its creators to see which videos are infringing while the music industry and Twitch are duking it out on the outside of this to see how much this, like, to see how much this is. So yeah. Twitch and the music industry are going head to head and all the streamers are just kind of ca caught in a crossfire right now. I, I think um, on top of that is that... Mm -hmm content creatives themselves don't feel like twitch is sticking out for them or like trying right. to stick up for them and so it's like almost like betrayal like they feel very betrayed by twitch that they're not doing anything to help this matter right to which harris heller offers a statement about and he says content creators are at the bottom line they're expendable and the platforms will ban creators off the platform if they don't conform to the rules otherwise the entire platform has to get shut down because it legally mm. if you don't comply with copyright you get shut down yeah twitch is not your friend youtube's not your friend they are a platform and you are essentially their employee and they have millions of employees sure yeah so at the end of the day it's like even if you are like a prominent streamer and that is your full-time job like twitch isn't necessarily like the creative community's friend they're a company they need to make money and they're going to continue to make money if it means they'd rather 
kick someone off who's bringing in profit, then we can shut down altogether. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. 100%. So Stefan closes the article and says, Meanwhile, the war drags on and streamers are left strand- stranded on the battlefield. Um, Luigi, what do you think? What are your reactions? Oh, my gosh. First of all, this story is crazy. Um, yeah. I love the way it's a lot going it. on. There's a lot, though, for sure, there's a lot going on, but just the way you presented it of this battle that's happening on the exterior, and then at the same time, the, the streamers who are really going to be the ones affected by any of this, not the not 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 Twitch itself or not any of the record labels, mm-hmm. but because they're they're really working out the major deal of like, okay, if we do give you the artists that we have, how much percentage can we get back from that? And then Twitch, that's probably the whole legal battle. But in yes. reality, it's like for these Twitch streamers who are just like, hey, I just want to promote this song. It's not like they're really trying to make steal that artist's money. They just like their music and want to use it as a background song or whatever. Yeah. But like, it sucks that this is this, this is kind of taking over. But it comes down to what you said at the very end about how it's like we are run on consumption, right? Like even right. just our new next gen launches. There's already out of stock places. Like I can't get a PS5 even if I want one, and that just adds to the level of the hype for these, you know, consoles. So it's like if if I can't get one, and then someone's selling one online for a thousand dollars, and I really want it, it just drives my like my want more, and it just I will pay a thousand dollars, you know. Sure. And these companies kind of want you to do that because then you're building the hype, like I'm saying, for their companies and for their products, even though you're over here paying more. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. it's just the cycle that they, that they play you. And it's okay because here's the thing. you can you, That's just the analytical of what's going on. But if the product is worth it, if the product is good, you don't get any complaints out of me, right? I love my PS4, dude. I love my PS4. Like, it, the thing never breaks down. Like, never breaks down. Sure. Maybe, well, that's not true. Well, I'd hope um, not. They're, they'll, it'll be like two, two random times. Maybe it'll freeze <laughs> out of like... The hours, you know, 60 or 70 hours of continuous play where it's right, like, right. oh, I was just on the night before. And then I get, as soon as I wake up, I'm like, let me watch something. <laughs> and then I'm on my PS4. So it's like, then maybe HBO Max might break down, but it could also be because their apps are crap, you know? So it's like, their it media apps depend. aren't the best. Yeah. It, yeah, okay. exactly. So it's just like, but what the, the, the base level, what I'm trying to get at is it's like, if they, they're making quality products, right? Like, PS5 looks cool. Like I I'm, I'm like, "Whoa, this Xbox Series X looks cool." You know, right. you're like, "Oh, this is this is definitely next gen." Like you feel it. You're like, "This is definitely next gen." So definitely definitely interesting to see them duke it out with like a whole nother industry, you know? Like sure. <laughs> it has nothing to do with gaming. It's like music industry now wants its cut of gaming, you know? Yeah, I bet. the biggest industry in the world, you know? Like one of them, I think we make up, I think gaming makes up uh, the box office, the yearly box office, the NBA, the NFL, the NHL, and the uh, Major League Baseball all combined. That's like crazy. Gaming is just. Huge. I believe it. It's so lucrative. I, yeah, I think, I think you're right there too. It's just, it's, it's crazy that Twitch itself is going like head to head with music as a like, whole. Like, There's like five music. different companies who are involved. There's sure. five different music industry labels. Giant. Absolutely giant. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, Twitch is a multi-billion dollar company. Do you think so? Can, do it. can I ask you something, James, real quick? Yeah, um, what's up? I have, so when, whenever you said that they only had like 50 of these claims come up, did, they, did, they, did the article say why suddenly they had like a mass amount? Was it that the record labels changed the guidelines for how their music could be used? And then that just it suddenly was, started... It wasn't that there was a change. It just said, I believe that it just said it was just like all of a sudden. It was very... Here's what I would assume. We don't have like a definite answer to that, I would say, but I would would assume that the higher ups of whatever music DMCA world was putting a lot of pressure on Twitch and they, the pressure, pressure was increased to make them take action. Um, But I don't know... I don't, there's no like for sure reason, but it's crazy. And I don't think this is going to end anytime soon. This is not going to end anytime soon. Um, and James, you brought up a quote by Harris Heller too. <laughs> Harris Heller is, um, he Excuse makes you. royalty free music that you can play on your uh, streams yes. also. So it's like, he's coming from a point, like a certain viewpoint for sure. And that, that's that. That's Twitch. That's Twitch and the DIA, DMCA kerfluffle. Okay. Yeah. Um, it'll it'll continue to develop, so yeah. 
for That's sure a good one you know. though man okay um, next up yeah then go for it next up battlefield 6 is launching holiday 2021 we will it will have a scale never seen before this is from Stuart thomas at games debate uh before we get into this james and luigi what's your standpoint on battlefield slash how do you feel about it all that kind of stuff have you played it battlefield in its current state is irrelevant um and that's what makes me say what this is what makes me say this is battlefield let's see let me think battlefield one mm-hmm. was trying out almost a new that was the first game that went back in back in time right they went back to world I war mean, one when everyone was else was doing world war two they did world war one they yeah. were unique in that okay. then after that battlefield five so they're really messing with the the consumers on which battlefield sure. they're on right yes i mean i get it battlefield one they're going back to world war one then battlefield five was a world war two game yep after everyone else already put out a world war two game now with battlefield six six do you know um, no they, they, we don't know what when it takes place or what it does okay yeah but here's the thing. battlefield five did not earn enough right no it, it, it flopped battlefield five flopped battlefield five flopped battlefield one didn't perform incredibly i don't know i i think battlefield one did pretty damn good especially since it was bundled okay. with a lot of consoles um i think battlefield five i think it came out in a weird launch window yeah so battlefield five i skipped completely i i thought so battlefield I. one was amazing like i've always been a battlefield guy over cod any day okay which mm-hmm. is um they've always been technologically like super impressive uh incredible to the frostbite engine um, is just amazing frostbite engine was just incredible but um i think they're in battlefield one it started to dip into some weird stuff with like loot boxes and stuff like that that was a little more Did foreign it? i don't even remember the genre yes they played around with some of the class systems okay or it was the progression that was just a little odd okay um and if like I said, I haven't played Battlefield 5, but if they continue that on to Battlefield 5, I could see how that would be unappealing for some of the core fan base. Um, I played Battlefield 5. To more tradition- okay. I skipped it at launch, but then when I did this like EA thing, I got a free copy of it. Um, so I started playing it. And what are your impressions? It. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't pay 60 bucks for it, um, yeah. but since I got it for free, like me and my brother would play it all the time, and it was a lot of fun. I had a great time. I think it's, I think it's beautiful. Um, but Dice did not implement the things that the community needed to implement to keep the community there. Um, but dude, the maps are gorgeous. They are like stunning sure. to go through, and it's fun. But it's not a great game or anything by any means. Um, it is a good time though. Damn, I remember the days when you used to argue whether you like Battlefield or Call of Duty, and you had the Battlefield guys over there who played hundreds of hours a day, and they yeah. were saying. Tango, Rider, Delta Nine, yeah. or Rubber Ducky. Sure. Yeah. Forty-two on the back, <laughs> double blue, you uh-huh. know, set hut. You yeah. know, and then you'd have Call of Duty guys who were just yelling at their TVs all day, and they would yell at each other all the time. Sure. But we just don't have that anymore because I don't think Battlefield has much of a player base anymore. It has been two years no. since the game. Luigi, how do you how do you feel That's about cool. Battlefield? Have you played any of them? Uh, I have Battlefield One downloaded on my console right now sure i think it was like four dollars uh one day it was on sale yeah it's just like four dollars like yeah i'll I'll play it and then i I never played it i never played it that was two years there you go battlefield one's a good time i also i'm gonna check it out after this conversation like i'm like that sounds exciting yeah it's the one where you can destroy everything right you can just like destroy all the buildings well that's that's the game's whole shtick yeah 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 yeah. that's what i mean yeah yeah it's cool i also battlefield one is uh included in the playstation plus collection on ps5 with, that's right which is weird that they chose that game out of all of them i i don't really understand yeah. that but cool do you think it'll revive the player base at all no okay. i i think it'll be like oh we'll check it out and then that's about it yeah uh, i agree in my opinion at least i mean it has it has potential to but i think there are other great games that people will na- um will gravitate towards more frequently yeah. too on the PlayStation Plus collection, especially some of the more hardcore single player games. They're, they're gonna be there for like, the exclusives also. Yeah, for God of War, for the Bloodborne, for the Last of Us, all those games. Yeah. All right. How many games do you know? 
There's like 22 yeah. games, 21 games. Yeah, something like that. There's a lot just of for, games. Just for having a membership? Yep. Wow. Yeah, just for having PlayStation. You really know how incredible. to sell it. Like, that's what I'm talking about. It's good. I'm it's a great that. deal. It's a great deal. Yeah. All right, let's I'm get into this. all my buddies who are, like, new to PlayStation, like, get, get PlayStation Plus and just take advantage of all those great games that you have. Oh, yeah. Because um, there's just so many, and a lot of them are getting <laughs> oh, updates yeah. for uh, PS5 that just dramatically improve the game. Can't wait to play Last of Us again. Your friends? Do you, do you ever look at your friends, James, and then you're just like, you don't know what you're re you're getting into. <laughs> like, you have no idea. <laughs> I think that's what they like perceive me as doing. Right. Like I don't think that's how I come up, but I think that's how they're like, they're like, like oh, don't tell them that you're getting a PS5, or else James will be up your butt. <laughs> questions. We love it. All yeah. right, so back to Battlefield 6 launching holiday 2021. In a recent earnings call for EA, the company reaffirmed that the next title in the Battlefield series will be launching holiday 2021 with more information coming in the next few months. Additionally, it will it will apparently be of never before seen scale taking full advantage of the next generation consoles. <clears throat> EA have confirmed that internal playtesting is already underway and they are receiving very positive feedback. A holiday 2021 launch will see the longest wait between Battlefield games in franchise history. Separately, right, I'm not going to lie to you. I hate to yeah. cut you off. Sure. I'm just letting you know, my interest is peaked. Sure. I, I, again, Battlefield interests me, and especially, I think it's good when games take, like, yearly games take a year off to make one game very so. great. I think that's a great thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um it always you never see it have negative repercussions hell no that's why i'm so excited mm -hmm. for valhalla bro me too oh i'm so excited mm -hmm. for valhalla like uh, they took a year off yeah odyssey oh, was yes. two years ago mm -hmm. god i can't i guys i can't <laughs> wait all right keep going man. all right sorry separately ea also mentioned that a total of six brand new games will be launching on next-gen consoles in the fiscal year of 2022 for ea that's, that's anytime between october 2021 and october 2022 so that's it's a, a lot little, of games. It's a little bit out, but six games in a single year is insane. One of these games will be the next Need for Speed developed by uh, Criterion, which made Need for Speed Rivals, which is the best Need for Incredible. Speed game Goated. Uh, since since what? Most Wanted? Most uh, Wanted I mean, two. I didn't even... that Maybe since like Underground, like okay. PS2 days. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Wow. Unfortunately, there was no mention of Dragon Age 4, no mention uh, of a new Star Wars game, or F. even the reboot of Anthem. Double F. I want that reboot so bad. I think... <laughs> it's, dude, it's Anthem... So uh, Pista brings up, nothing good can come out of EA except for Need for Speed. I, I only slightly agree and slightly disagree with that. I'm trying to think of good things that have come out of EA, and I'm praying that Anthem 2 really just really makes it I hope happen. it just knocks it out of the park. Anthem 2.0, baby. I'm ready for it. Give it to me. Next gen. There's some cool... I wanted the first one to be good, yeah. like, really bad. It has the potential to be good. It really could. I think so, too. But it's going to take a lot of time, and they have a very small team working on it right now. But, hey, so does No Man's Sky. So You're right. So does No Man's Sky, and look at No Man's Sky and where it is right now. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Luigi, do you have any final thoughts? Look at that baby Blossom. That's all I got. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the baby of Battlefield looking at Blossom. That's yeah. funny. Uh James. All right, moving on. C Project Red reaffirms the Cyberpunk 2077 release date. I know there was a little bit of speculation, especially because uh, some of the devs said that they were not confident in the December 10th release date. However, for about a day, well, many and they didn't tweet for a whole month since the delay thing. And right, they, right, right. They tweet so like twice a day. That, they, yep. And so, at one point people started to notice that Cyberpunk, the Twitter page, Cyberpunk Game, at Cyberpunk Game, took out their December 10th release date out of their bio. Yep. People were starting to freak out. Right. But, rest assured, about, I think it was at the end of that day or the day after, day after, yeah. they updated their Twitter header with a graphic saying Cyberpunk 2077, December 10th. Uh, which, yeah. Go which, ahead. Which what? I was just going to talk out my ass. Go ahead. Yeah, this game's not coming out this year. I'm gonna call it right now. I, I don't think it's really? coming out in 2020. I, I disagree. No. That's hey, a hot take. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a little worried that uh, the date that this will be released is in the title. We're not seeing this baby for 2077 till 2077. I disagree. <laughs> I think we'll get it December 10th. God, I want it on December 10th, James, but I've been let down all year with release dates. James, our first episode of 
of this podcast 40 mm-hmm. episodes ago 40 weeks ago was about a cyberpunk delay okay now we're here 40 episodes wow. later talking about another cyberpunk delay and there's been three in between those hey you know what that's okay okay here's the if it does get delayed <laughs> i'm okay with that because cyberpunk you just take your time baby you know what you just take, i know do whatever you need yeah do whatever you'll you're fine do your thing exactly. you're fine you're doing great okay but i think they're set on december 10th release date it's... I think so too, bro. They because they want Keanu. that holiday season. I mean, oh, who doesn't? Got... Right. All these games want it. God, Cyberpunk. Yeah. I hope if it does get delayed again, I hope they aren't crunching for another month. Even though they're Pretty getting bad. fatty paychecks for the crunch. Dude, they're fatty paychecks, James. What are they're we getting saying? fatty? Like forty-seven thousand dollars this month. To, you have to also dollars. not project your cultural standards of crunch to their um game development because crunch in poland and work standards are incredibly different than they are in the u.s we had a whole episode about that though right we did so if you want to watch the episode about our crunch breakdown go watch it it's a good episode um it's on youtube i thought it was a great episode yeah but um long story short they're getting paid fat stacks for crunching fat stacks yeah and it's one extra day a week well, okay, but that's but that was as of last delay. We don't know how they're at now. That's as of last yeah, day. So we don't, we don't like there's nothing um that would indicate a further delay so far. So far. So far. Everything just now is speculation. All right. Next up we're gonna go on to a review round roundup. We got lots of them with the release of the PS five and the weekly and uh, all the launch titles that came out this week. Vin, why don't you start us off with Miles Morales? Ladies and gentlemen, first up, Miles Morales. Here we go. Review roundup from a bunch of different sites. We have IGN, 9 out of 10. Game Informer, 9 out of 10. Easy Allies, 9 out of 10. US Gamer, 4.5 out of 5, which is another 9 out of 10 if you do the math. And this comes from Polygon. After finishing it, I was left with a sense of belonging, of intimacy with characters and relationships. In this scaled down version of an open world game, Miles Morales is a character who was created to make others feel like they belonged and were welcomed. And now that's accomplished off the back of one of the most one of the best action adventure games I've ever played. We love a review that's not uh rating based. Love it. Love yeah. to see it. Um next up I can't wait. Wait, Finn. Chi is right. Chia in chat? Oh it's that game looks like it fucks. Absolutely right. You're absolutely right, 100%. Chia. <laughs> and you can bet your ass I'll be buying the first one too. Can't wait. Monday it is. Uh, do you have any other thoughts on it, Luigi, Vince? Any thoughts on Miles Morales? Anything you're particularly looking I, forward to? That's going to be game of the year for me. Really? You haven't even played it yet, Luigi. Luigi, you played Last of Us um, yet? I know marketing. I know gaming. It's going to be game of the year. Watch. What? what? That's bold. That's bold, Luigi. That's a PS5. bold statement. Somebody, somebody clip it. PS5. Somebody clip it. Send it in the Discord. I, I, we'll I disagree. Yours. I don't think it'll be. I don't think so game of the year for PS5. I think yeah, um, watch. I think I think one company out of all the reviews that you named will name it uh, game of the year. IGN or Wired or Tech Crunch, one of them. Okay. One of them, at least one of them that that claim. Okay. We'll say. I, I think there's gonna be just so they can come out with a DVD one that says game of the year on it. That's <laughs> that's James. I think there's gonna be a lot of hot takes for game of the year, and I think. Last it's, of Us 2 is going to come out on top. It's going to be an interesting, interesting thing. Because I don't know if I... I think Last of Us oh. is the best game I've played this year. But I haven't played Ghost of Tsushima yet. So I can't give it there yet. Also, Animal Crossing came out this year. And I don't want to bury that under the rug. Because Animal Crossing is incredible. It is incredible. Yeah. Okay, right, James, next, next up. One. We got Assassin's Creed Valhalla. GameSpot gave it an 8 out of 10. IGN an 8 out of 10. Games Radar 4.5 out of 10. 5.5 out of 5. That's a 10 if you do the math. Game Informer gave it a 9.25 out of 10. Polygon mm-hmm. says, Valhalla's most intriguing story is one about faith, honor, and family, but it's buried inside this massive, massive world stuffed with combat and side quests. That balance is not always ideal, but I'm glad at least that it forces me to spend more time seeking out interesting things in the game's world absolutely high praise people some say i think this was from a pc gamer said it is the best assassin's creed to date wow it's crazy i i won't believe it till i see it i love the odyssey baby same yeah but i can't wait to play this i think we got i think it'll blow odyssey out of the water hi that's high dude i don't know we'll see we'll see i okay this is also coming from someone who didn't like odyssey that's 
and I loved Odyssey, but Why it had so not? many problems. Did you did you play it, Luigi? So many, many, many. I just beat it. I, I know, I'm, and I made sure because Luigi's mic's going in and out, guys. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, we had. Oh, yeah. can you hear me now? Can yes, yeah, much good. better, Way much better. Consistent. Oh. Sorry about that. Um, no, I was saying I just got the the email sent to me that I beat the game, and it said that I made sure my dad, my mom, and my sister survived. So wait, 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 wait. For what game? It. What is this in reference? Wait, wait, to? Hold on. you gotta have to. Uh, what the hell is that talking about? <laughs> Luigi, you, Odyssey. Your mic exploded again, dog. I have to. I have to keep turning you up and down. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Gosh, how about now? I know I'm like talking about other stuff. Uh, how about how's this? It is worse. The quality is much worse. But yeah, can't hear you. It's fine. Easily, just though. just stick with one or the other and tell us your point because we gotta know what what you're even in reference what to. What are you talking about? Yeah. We gotta know. Um. So I was just talking about the much fact better that when you beat Odyssey, they send you an email. They send you an email when you beat Odyssey, and it said that I that I my dad, my mom, and my sister all are like I didn't kill them or they didn't die. Are we talking about Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Mario Odyssey? No, this no, no, no. I don't I'm think about that's... Assassin's Creed. Okay, wait. Well, yeah, I beat the game. I 100% of the game did not get an email. I got the platinum trophy. Did not get an email. You didn't get an email. I can pull it up right now. It literally says like, "Oh, Cassandra survived. Oh, Mayrani survived. Oh, uh, that's Florida actually pretty cool. Is. Like, that's cool. I thought so too. I thought it was dope. I, like I was that. like, I was like, this is cool. That's like, and then it tells you how many hours I spent. A hundred hours on this game. Oh, so you were close to that platinum too, baby. You were real close. There it is. There's the email. Oh, there, it there it is. I can't read it, but there it Me is. Me neither. I believe it you. Says, it says, congratulations, assassin. That's actually cool. I, I, think, know about all that. I think that's a little cheesy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. It's a little cheesy. I don't, I don't like it. I, I enjoy it. it. I enjoy it. Uh, we're yeah. going to move on to community questions. Community questions, baby. Real quick, before we start our community questions, you can join our Discord and send us questions every week, and we will answer them on the show. Um, you may or may not like our answers. Forewarning. So our first one takes. Our first one and our only one this week comes from the one and only Mr. Hollywood. Okay, he starts it off own. strong. Our very, our very own Mr. Hollywood. Our very own. All right. Is this cheating? I don't know, but we're gonna do it anyway. Maybe. <laughs> Ryder asks, "Do you recommend waiting to get next gen consoles because of launch bugs, or is that sort of thing just random and not a huge issue?" Can I throw my two cents out there? Yes. Here it is. I think that the thought process, okay, if you're gonna buy, if you're, if your head's buying an X Gen console, you're buying an X Gen console. If you're not buying it because you can't afford it or you can't, um, it's just a bad time or like you're waiting for something to buy it and everything, you're just trying to talk yourself out of it saying that there's bugs during launch. True. That's you're all right. it is. And like, I understand. It's, I understand, but I don't think that you should not buy it at the beginning because of bugs. I think that there's, I don't know, it doesn't make sense. But this comes with a response. Were you about to sneeze, James? I couldn't tell if you were about to talk or sneeze. I couldn't tell at all. I was about to talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then go for it, Todd. <laughs> um, I think in terms of supply, yeah. I think by the time you're going to be able to get a PlayStation 5, if you didn't pre-order one or just if you... If you're getting a PS5 when everyone else is getting a PS5, you don't have to worry about it anyway. Okay. They're going to work Unless out Unless you're a part of the community who's like very adamant about buying a PS5 within like this launch window. Um, if you're an average consumer who's going to wait for whenever they get more stock in, I don't think, I think they'll already be patched. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's the best way of looking at it. Because bugs only are really there the first week. I mean, I Even can see if. this next-gen console having some problems, but at the same time, dude, they've been prepping this shit for years now. You yeah. Know, like, they have been working on this technology for so long. If it does mess up, it'll be that one case out of the millions. Or like two, the disk drive like thing. The, the yeah. disk drive. Right. right. Exactly. And so I, I think it's the same thing. I agree. I think that with any new technology, there's going to be bugs. You know what I mean? This is 100%. no different. If you're if you're getting it right at the beginning, you have to expect that it might not be 100% great, but you should expect a, a good product, and they're going to deliver a good product. Um, we mm -hmm. also have a response to this question from Coffers in the questions uh, category. Uh, he responded to Mr. Hollywood by saying, well, 
2K, she's talking about basketball. 2K is super choppy and laggy in the courts and they aren't even crowded yet. I don't necessarily know what that means, but he says that that killed the buzz for him. He's playing on a Xbox Series X next gen and he says that it's choppy and laggy in the courts. It's not the console, but I'm sure a lot of games will have issues at first. That was That's his bug from his day one uh, Xbox Series X. So it's not the console, it's the Give game. Give it a week. Give it a week. Give it a week. They'll patch it. It'll be fine. Yeah. Quick update. Pish posh. It'll be already. Pish posh. Move along, soldier. This is it. Guys, there's three random fun stuff items and three of us. We can all take one. Oh. This is I want the done. last one. Okay, I'll take the first one. All right. All right. Guys, welcome to Random Fun Stuff. Stories without a story, as James likes Woo! to say. These are headlines that need no explaining because that's all it is. So we got a couple this week. Number one, installing all of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War requires 180 gigabytes on console. <laughs> on the back of the box, oh my God. like the back of a box for it, it says 285 gigabytes. <laughs> uh, yeah, so good luck. Good luck with that one. With that's your... half a PS5 Yeah. right now. Good luck. Oh my god. Alright, Luigi, what's the second one? Um, I'm trying to find it. Where do I oh, find it? Oh, it's at the very bottom. Oh, Sorry. Very bottom. RFS. Just for, just for fun? Oh, RFS? Oh, here, I can read it. If you don't have the doc pulled up, I can read it. I'm sorry. I thought you had the doc pulled up. Oh, oh, I, I, no, I had the doc pulled up. I didn't know it was in the doc. Oh, no, it's good. It's at the very oh, bottom. I see. Yeah. Number two. Uh, Star Wars. Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order joins Game Pass Ultimate on the 10th of November console only there that's it is. not a bad that's pretty dope kind of an f that's console only it is a big f that is console only oh, what, do you, what, yeah. do, what does that mean so game pass is on pc and console um and ea is doing their partnership with xbox um to allow some of their games to be part of the service um mm-hmm. but this game is only available on the console version of xbox game pass which is an f for me because i'm a game pass pc guy and a PlayStation yep. console guy. And so, yep. it's a bummer. Damn. But that's okay. Last but certainly not least, Phil Spencer has con- confirmed that he has played a lot of Elden Ring. Phil Spencer is the head of Xbox, if you guys did not know. My bad. Yep. Um, Elden Ring has what? No, There's no gameplay for Elden Ring. There's no, there's nothing about Elden Ring besides that launch trailer. That Which was E3 really cool. Like three or four years ago. Yeah. Cool. And it's been a mist ever since. Is that going to be an exclusive? No idea. No one knows. It Who knows? probably is, right? Because they bought Bethesda, right? Uh, that's from software. Which oh, is a yeah. Sony yeah. third party. Oh, so this is weird. It's a different company. I don't know. It'll be a cross. It'll be a whole yeah. ass cross. Um, I'm going to be big bummed if it's Xbox exclusive. If it is, you'll get it on PC. Because all yeah. Xbox exclusives come to PC too, as they said. Um, I'm, off, everything comes to PC. I'm obligated. Yeah, absolutely obligated. Ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up episode forty. Yes, sir. The big four zero. Like that's big. That's a lot of episodes. It's a lot of weeks of uh, of this show. Um, that Luigi, thank you so much for hopping on here, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Um, if you want to tell a little bit. It's completely cut out. I can't get a word. I'm not getting a word out of yeah. it. Luigi, are you saying anything, dog? <laughs> oh, God. No, I was just uh, saying go. shout out to you guys. I was trying to find you on Twitch. I don't know what. I'm on Discord, so I don't know what side you're on. But I was trying to find you, so I was like, shout out to these guys. <laughs> there we go. It worked. We got it done. Right. All right, guys. This is yeah, 10 yeah, yeah. months of the podcast, though. 10 months of the podcast. 10 months. We started in what, January, February? We started, well... Uh, we started thinking about it in December because I have uh, Snapchat memories of us with graphics on the computer last December. Mm. So we're just trying to make it better every week, you know? Wow. Slowly but surely. That's incredible. Um, you guys, this will be live on YouTube tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Um, PST. PST. Uh, stick around. We're going to have a post show in a sec, so we're just going to end the episode, and we'll be right back talking to you guys in chat. Appreciate you all being here. Um, this is sick. This is super fun. I love you all. Thank you, chat, for hanging out tonight. Uh, and Join yeah. our Discord, follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, That's follow right. us on TikTok. Everything's below. Uh, Everything's below. We will be right back after our closing theme song. Are you ready? Are you ready? Peace out, everybody.